Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Green Elves, thanks to the recent addition of Elvish Mystic in the format, a 1 1 that can tap for green, and we now have 12 1 drops in the deck total that can produce mana between Mystic, Lenor Elves, and then Sentinel, which can make a mana if we tap another untapped creature alongside it. Reach also very useful against the various flying decks in the format. And then all these 1 drops will give us consistent access to these explosive starts, where we can maybe play a 3 drop on turn 2, like Circle of Dreams Druid, which can tap adding a green for each creature we control, which can very quickly get out of hand thanks to all the token makers in our deck, like Elvish Warmaster, another great payoff in this deck, which will make a 1-1 elf token whenever another elf enters a battlefield under our control, triggers once each turn, and then for 7 mana we can give our team plus 2 plus 2 and a death touch until end of turn, so great finishing move if we can generate a lot of mana with either our Circle of Dreams Druid, maybe our Marwyn the Nurture, a 1-1 legendary elf that picks up a plus 1 counter whenever another elf enters a battlefield under our control, and then tap adding an amount of green equal to its power, which will also quickly get out of hand with all the tokens from Warmaster and Dwinna's Elite, a 2-2 elf making a 1-1 token if we control another elf when it enters. And then we also have two copies of a Growing Rites of Itlamok as another great way to generate a ton of mana. A legendary enchantment when it enters gives us a bit of card selection, finding a creature in the top four. And then if we control four or more creatures end of turn, it transforms into Cradle of the Sun, which is essentially a Gaia's Cradle, an incredibly powerful land, making a green for each creature creature we control, so similar to Circle of Dreams Druid, and that can potentially help us cast a collected company in the opponent's turn after transforming it, and then we can find more elves with it and hopefully combo off. And another great card draw engine in our deck besides company is the Realmwalker, a 2-3 changeling, meaning it's also an elf, can name elf when it enters to help us play elves off the top of our deck. So Realmwalker is perfect alongside all the mana we generate from Circle of Dreams Druid, Marwyn, and Growing Rites, as we can keep playing more and more elves off the top, and if you take a look at our land count, it's incredibly low, so very high creature density means Realmwalker is going to be great in this deck. And of course we have a low land count because we have all these creatures that generate mana. And then rounding out the deck, we've got two copies of Elvish Visionary, which draws when it enters, and the full set of Elvish Clancaller, which will pump up our team, giving them plus one plus one, can pay six mana, tap it, to search our library for another copy of Clancaller, and put it straight onto the battlefield. So an awesome mana sink, and also potentially a shuffle effect. Let's say we have a Realmwalker out and there's a land on top, we can maybe still activate Clank Hauler and then shuffle our deck and maybe there will be more elves on top that we can play. And then our mana base includes two copies of Lair of the Hydra as a creature land that can be useful in the more controlling matchups and another good mana sink. And then 12 basic lands to enable three copies of Castle Garenbrig, which is also awesome in a deck like this as we can often activate it and then potentially cast two three drops with it or it can help us activate a Warmaster a turn sooner and a Clan Caller as well. So we can also use it on abilities from our elves and then a one-off Bosteju, which can also potentially come in handy, maybe take out a Parhelion and buy us more time. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and this hand is missing a one-mana elf, so is it still keepable? I don't actually think so, we don't even have the mana to cast our three drops, and uh, yeah, this hand doesn't really function. Okay, this hand's also very awkward, with no untapped land on turn one. Do you get to play Mystic on two, but it feels kind of sluggish. Alright, this is better. And then Elite can go. And then maybe one of the Elves. Keep Realmwalker as a turn two play. And then if we hit lands off the top, we can cast Company. If not, we can maybe play some Elves off the top instead. Opponent also turn one Elves. Warmaster is nice. I think I still Realmwalker first. And a land coming up. Good to see. Because on the Mammoth, their opponent on a Stompy deck. Okay, can play Warmaster into Elves to get a token, or we can play Elves first in case there's another Elf we can cast for free. I think I want to get my guaranteed value. And pass it back. And then we'll cast more elves if we can. If we run out, we'll company. 
Mammoth hitting for five might be worth jumping. Since they do have some trample creatures in the deck, which we won't be able to jump as easily. And we're pretty far from activating Warmaster since we're missing a uh, mana generator. So Mystic, Elite, Ponus got Collected Company most likely here. And Marwyn's excellent, although won't be able to play it just yet. So we'll play an Elite. And pass. Not gonna attack into Collected Company. So Realm Walker providing a lot of value. Hopefully this company is not too devastating. Alright, Steel Leaf Champion's a problem. Another creature that we can chum block easily. Kenra is not too bad. Could see a Great Henge this turn. Or scavenging Ooze instead. At least the graveyards are empty. And another Kenra. Probably pumping the Steel Leaf. And then can Trump Mammoth take seven most likely. And we'll jump with the token since those won't be able to eat those. Okay, so I think we want to get Marwyn going as soon as possible to generate more mana to activate Warmaster. So I'll start there. And then ideally our next card here is a land that we draw with Visionary. Yep, perfect. And then we can cast another cheap elf on top, like a sentinel. I'll take it. Okay, and then we still have a company left over. Next turn we can activate our Warmaster if it survives. And our opponent only has a Steel Leaf, that's really threatening. But they might have some fight spells in hand that they'll fire off here. Alright, another company. Find Steel Leaf and Ooze. So, yeah, we're on a two turn clock. I'm gonna take five, and next turn, lethal from double Steel Leaf. Unless we wanna block with Marwyn, I guess. If I take five, I guess next turn I could still block. Unless we can present lethal, which is possible. Okay, Clan Caller seems worth casting, and I can activate Castle Garenbrig. Which will also help activate Warmaster. I guess it doesn't help with Collected Company as a drawback. But we should be able to make use of the mana. Marwyn keeps growing. So do we cast a Circle of Dreams? I could cast Circle of Dreams. Pass the turn. And then have the Warmaster's ability available, plus a Collected Company. Unless we're guaranteed to present lethal here. Points got four, five, six, seven blockers. So five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five creatures go through. That's not quite going to be enough for lethal. So let's play Circle of Dreams. And another Warmaster, I guess. And now that we pump our team, we can actually block the Steel Leaf just fine. So I guess we can keep going. And I don't think we want to cast Realm Walker because that's going to force us to tap Marwyn and I would rather keep that mana for the opponent's turn. So we'll pass. And then we can both cast Company and activate or Warmaster on defense. And then hopefully next turn attack for lethal. So yeah, on a mulligan to 5 I believe. Our deck's still going off. Got double Warmaster, both Marwyn and Circle of Dreams so we can generate all the mana we need. And luckily Monogreen does not pack any sweeper effects. So we should be safe. All right, our opponent passes, and we can uh, float some mana here. Cast company, hitting 
Realm Walker Warmaster. Get a bunch more triggers. Company in the opponent's turn is also a way to get more elf tokens from Warmaster. Getting around the restriction. And then I think it's time to combo off here. I guess Realm Walker making three more elf tokens is worth it, since that'll grow Marwyn even more. And then we can spend the rest of our mana with Marwyn and our Circle of Dreams pumping the team. Could also activate Clan Caller to shuffle the top of our deck, find another copy to potentially keep going, but I think we'll have enough damage as is. Name Elf. Bunch of triggers. Activate Warmaster using Marwyn. And then we can also use a Circle of Dreams if we'd like. Not gonna play around a fog effect, but I guess her opponent could have one here. Would be pretty funny. Alright, that should be enough. Attack with all. And there we have it. Let's see how much damage we can rack up. Alright, 338 negative life total. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Assuming Elvish Mystic survives, our hand's got potential. Up against the blue whites. So it could be Control, which is not our favorite matchup. Although having collected company and Realm Walker helps. Growing rights will be nice to get in play at some point and transform to get more mana going. For now we can play an Elite. Sensor not going to be very effective against us as we can generate a lot of mana. I'm going to save Realm Walker until after a potential Sweeper to rebuild. And it's also going to be better if we have access to more mana. Okay. So, don't quite have the mana to play Elite and Growing Rights and have it transform. If I play Growing Rights, we're not overextending into a Sweeper, at least. And I guess I could hit a 1-drop and transform it, and then still play Company in the opponent's turn, which would be the dream. So we'll try it, and hope to hit a 1-mana Elf. We hit another Elite instead. Alright, in that case we'll just hit for 4. And then next turn we can make the play I described of playing an Elf, transforming Growing Rites, and being able to cast Company in the opponent's turn, potentially floating mana in response to a Sweeper. Alright, we get to untap. So we can play a Dwinnan's Elite to help transform the Growing Rites. Interesting that we both have these Ixalan enchantments that transform into lands. And then given our opponents put a Supreme Verdict in the graveyard, they probably have another one in hand. So for now we can just attack for 4 once again. And then transform Growing Rights end of turn to maybe cast a Collected Company. Although our opponent does also have a Field of Ruin, which they may want to use on the transformed Growing Rights. Nope, never mind, it's going to be a March to exile it instead. Fair enough. This opponent's going to get to untap and probably wipe the board. And yep, there's another Supreme Verdict. So time to rebuild, and we probably start with Elves plus another Dwinnan's Elite to get on the board. That'll give us the mana to maybe cast the company next turn if we want to. And also just apply a nice bit of pressure. Opponents cycling a Shark Tafuin in response to the Search for Ascanta trigger, so they can maybe transform it and keep the card on top. And now a 3-3 Shark's also gonna hold off any attacks. Okay, Buseju would have been an answer to Ascanta. Can still use it now, but I think I need it as a land instead. And we can actually activate Castle Garenbrick to cast both Circle of Dreams and Realmwalker, but we'll start with Realmwalker in case there's another Elf on top. 
but we'll just play Circle of Dreams here and pass it back. With a Shark Token attacking right away implies that another Sweeper is incoming, so that does not bode well for us. And farewell exiling everything. Okay, well I think I'm casting Company Main Phase to play around a Counterspell, and we hit a lot of Elves. Warmaster, Marwyn, and Realmwalker seem like the most interesting ones. So probably need Realmwalker for the card advantage. And then Marwyn, probably a better version of Circle of Dreams to generate mana. As it can also just attack for more damage. So maybe we have to give up on the Elvish Warmaster and hope to find another one with the Realmwalker at some point. To help us uh, make more tokens and attack. Since we do also have a Duinan's Elite in hand, which can help grow Marwyn. So we'll see how this plays out. Already an Elvish Mystic. Get to untap, and there's another Realmwalker on top, so we'll start there, activate Castle. Since I'm sure we can make use of that creature mana. And uh, see Elvish Warmaster on top, perfect. So we're just going to unload here, cast as many elves as possible before tapping Marwyn. And another Lenore elves on top is perfect. We'll trigger Warmaster, making another elf token, growing Marwyn. And Clan Caller can pump our team, as well as Marwyn. Okay, so we're just going to keep going here and hope there's no follow-up sweeper. But our opponents already cast their fair share of sweepers and put them in the graveyard. So, unless they find it with Ascanta, we might be in the clear. And to that end, I think I'm okay attacking with Realmwalker into a potential 5-5 shark token. That way they only get to draw one card of the cycling as opposed to digging deeper with Ascanta and find a sweeper. And our opponent takes the bait and ambushes Realmwalker. Because at this point, their only realistic out is finding a sweeper. Killing a Realmwalker is not going to make a difference, so our opponent goes digging with Ascanta. Can they find another Supreme Verdict? Doesn't look like it, otherwise we would have seen it already, just a portable hole. They're going to need more than one spot removal spell here. And our opponent explodes, awesome! So Mono Green Elves actually beating Blue-White Control, doesn't happen every day. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands could use a little bit of help off the top, but a Growing Rights should be able to transform quickly thanks to Dwinan's Elite making tokens. And then if we find a good Elf with the uh, enchantment, we should be good to go. So I'll try it. Opponent on a white deck. Play Elite, and attack for one. Turn to Jada, so Angels. Alright. So can't quite activate Castle yet, but we can play Growing Rites. If we find a one drop, we can transform the Growing Rites, although I don't really want to necessarily grab a one drop. But it might still be worth it in case that's the only option. Alright, find a clan caller, that'll do. And I'll offer the trade. So next turn we can activate castle and pretty much empty our hand. And then the growing rights will be useful for activating clan caller in the future. Warmaster also very useful. So activate castle. Can tap our token and go Warmaster into Clan Caller and Elite. And yeah, this uh, transformed land is gonna make all the difference. No attacks. Can activate Warmaster in the opponent's turn, which can also be combined with a Reach creature to maybe block one of their flyers. Inspiring Overseer, that's fine. Okay. Sentinel 
we might as well play here. So... I think we don't activate Castle this time, just go for Elite Sentinel before tapping Cradle. And how much mana can we make here? 12, 13, so I can activate both Clan Caller and War Master. Do I attack with a Sentinel? Sure. Possible that just activating Warmaster twice would have been good enough. But yeah, opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential. A little bit awkward with Castle coming into play tapped, but can go turn one Helenor Elves, turn two potentially a Warmaster. Opponent's blue reds. Okay, there's a forest. So now we'll go with Marwyn first. And if it dies, we have a backup. If not, it's gonna grow very quickly between Warmaster and Elite. Launcher Shredder, Serpent on a Phoenix deck, perhaps. And yeah, we'll play Warmaster into Elite. And just attack with Marwyn this turn. Opponent gets to connive, that's fine. And then next turn Marwyn can help us activate Warmaster, which is going to be great with all these tokens. But of course, just a removal spell on Warmaster is going to solve that problem. And they've got a bounce spell for Marwyn, that's also effective. And a Stormwing Entity. Alright. So maybe not quite a Phoenix deck, but just blue-red aggro, also possible. Clan Caller is a great draw. So we can activate Castle Garenbrig. Play Marwyn into Clan Caller. And then the question is, does a Warmaster attack into Storming Entity? Or do we hold it back? Probably still better off saving the Warmaster. And then just attack with Dwinnan's Elite this turn. And hopefully next turn we can attack for lethal. Could also send in everyone, that way we hit them for 8. They trade for Warmaster most likely. And then we might be in a fine position to win next turn with our opponents at uh, essentially 5. Yeah, you know what, let's try this. All right, they're gonna eat a 2-2 and take 8. Works for me as well. A reckless Rage kills Marwyn. Fair enough. Wasn't expecting a 4 damage removal spell. But it does make sense in a deck with Ledger Shredder, Entity, and Soulscar Mage with Prowess. Can they also kill Clan Caller? If they can, I could still activate War Master if I draw a land. Thanks to Lunar Elves. And I don't think they can present Lethal here, but maybe with like a double strike effect. Okay, so just a Stormwing attacking, and presumably they've got a removal spell for Clan Caller left over. So, what do we want to do? I can uh, play a Lenor Elves to trigger Warmaster. Could also activate Clan Caller, get another one, which may just be the play. Yeah, if I just attack with all these. They can block one, kill a clan caller, but we should still have lethal. So Reckless Rage kills clan caller, but we'll still get the ability here. Trigger Warmaster and get in for the win. 
Awesome. So despite quite a bit of interaction, the elves got it done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Sadly, our only land comes into play tapped, so this hand might be too slow. But we could of course draw an untapped green source. And this hand does have a lot of potential. So forest of the top, we can play turn one elves, turn two Marwyn, and then we're off to the races. So despite the risk here, I think this hand has enough potential that it's worth keeping. On the play, I think I would have mulliganed. Opponent on the red aggro deck. Not a matchup where you want to stumble. I'll still take a land of the top. So we can play multiple mana elves. Gonna take some early damage because of our slow start. But then next turn we can maybe get some tokens going to block the Pyromancer. At least they're on the Wizards build, so they're less likely to have Goblin Chain Warlord, which would have been a disaster here. Okay, so I'll play probably Warmaster plus Elite. Although we might see removal on Warmaster in response. Play with Fire takes it out. So it's unlikely for us to transform a Growing Rights next turn, but if we get the chance it would be awesome to then follow up with a Collected Company. Strangle kills Elite. Happy to trade my 1-1 one -one for Paramancer. Since we're not gonna transform our Growing Rights anyway. Alright, if we had picked up a land I would have liked Marwyn into Clan Caller. Now do we... Visionary plus Clan Caller, or just go for Collected Company. That might be better. Because if we hit one of our big mana producers, we can unload our hands much faster. And just playing Marwyn here seems inefficient. So our opponent moves to combats. Could try and Company now. Although, between the burn spells they have in hand and the few elves that have a lot of toughness, I don't really see myself trying to ambush Lava Runner, so I'll just give them less information by waiting. And I'll take the two. Soulscar Mage, okay. Opponent hangs on to two spells in hand. Probably a Wizard's Lightning in there, at least. Get to trigger Warmaster. So I don't think we would have been blocking the Lava Runner. There's a Wizard's Lightning, as we suspected. So our opponent's down to one card in hand, which is good to know. And we picked up another company, although now is the perfect time for Growing Rights. As we get to transform it right away. And I'll go for Dwin's Elite. And uh, sure, we'll play the Elite before playing Clan Caller, I think. Since they might still have one burn spell left. So they won't be able to stop our transformation. Kumano is acceptable. So now we're probably going to have to block. And let's company first to see what's up. And we hit a lot of goodies. Double Warmaster is probably good enough here. Since we don't need more card advantage or mana now with the Cradle. So making Chum Blockers and eventually activating Warmaster for the win seems good enough. And let's see here, can trade and Chump. Preserve as many tokens as possible and not take any unnecessary damage. Lightning killing the elites. Sure. But our opponent's in trouble here. 
So can play clank hauler. Trigger Warmeister twice. How much mana does Cradle make here? 11. So yeah, we can just activate Warmeister and that should be lethal. And our opponent agrees. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand's got a lot of potential. Turn 1 Elves, turn 2 Circle of Dreams perhaps, which will help us activate Warmeister. Although up against blue-white control, which is a pretty rough matchup. So gotta either kill them before a sweeper happens, or... Yeah, that probably implies a Doomscar, although Doomscar's not that popular, so it might just be a Behold the Multiverse, which is what I'm hoping for. So for now, Warmaster into Visionary, can company the opponent's turn if we'd like, or we can do it now if we're not gonna play around a sweeper, but... Casting it in the opponent's turn also helps us uh, make another token with Warmaster, so I think we'll still do it that way. Um, sure, or we can just empty out our hand completely and then hope there's no Doomscar. And maybe we can kill them before they cast a uh, Supreme Verdict. Might have wanted to company before playing the Mystic to grow Marwin one more. Okay, well, not a bad turn three. Does our opponent have a Doomscar? They don't. And we get to untap. And activate Warmaster a few times. And can do it again. Marwin making even more mana now that we pumped our team. And our opponent explodes. Well, that's a turn four kill. Potentially before a sweeper could come down. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Plenty of acceleration. Clan caller to pump the team up against Angels. And a Circle of Dreams Druid, a reason to play Lenor Elves turn one. So that's going to help us empty our hand quickly and maybe activate Clan Caller to get more copies. We will get bullied by a Speaker early on, but that's okay. So next turn I can pretty much empty my hand. Interesting that Speaker didn't attack that time, so maybe they're saving it to enable a Resplendent Angel next turn. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and unload. Playing as many creatures before tapping Circle of Dreams Druid as possible. And how about... Visionary, in case we hit another relevant 3-drop we want to play right now. Okay, and then uh, Clan Caller, so next turn we can already activate it. So our opponent's gonna take to the skies, but luckily we have double Sentinel to block there as well. Just another Bishop for now. Okay. How much mana can we generate here? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... So, step one might be Elites, since that's mana neutral with a Circle of Dreams. Then we'll Company, in case we hit a Marwyn we can start growing, and then I can still activate Elvish Clan Caller. Okay, we hit Realmwalker and probably another Clan Caller. Naming Elf. Land on top, so we can draw into the lands, and then still search up another Clan Caller if we'd like. Or maybe it was better off just activating Clan Caller to begin with. But I'll do it now. And another Realm Walker on top. These can attack. And next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Unless your opponent gains a ton of life, which I guess with double bishop they could. But probably limited to playing one angel. So that's going to gain them 8, up to 15. And then if it's Resplendent Angel, I guess they'll make another token, which gains 8 once more. So they may actually survive another turn here. And now the Angels are also going to turn into Spirits. 
So we didn't find anything useful on top, which means I might want to activate Clan Collar to find something on top. So activate one of these, one Clan Collar left, so one Shuffle effect left, and our opponent concedes. All right, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this is quite promising. Might be able to enable uh, Growing Rights pretty early on. So for now, Mystic, turn to War Master, play another Mystic. We'll have four Elves already. So yeah, we can actually transform turn three if all goes according to plan. But our opponent might have a bit of interaction here. And then the best card to follow up a transformed Growing Rights would be a Collected Company, so we can still make use of all that mana in the opponent's turn, perhaps. Ooh, Incubation Druid, so this must be a Fight Rigging slash um, Emergent Ultimatum combo deck. And we don't actually have removal for Incubation Druid, so that could be scary. Now, we picked up a Circle of Dreams, but since Growing Rights is going to transform, it's pretty similar to playing a Circle of Dreams. Although I guess it wouldn't trigger War Master, so maybe Circle of Dreams is still better. Yeah, let's try it. And then next turn, we'll get the Growing Rights going. Hope to dodge a Fight Rigging, which will let us tap for 3 mana right away. Right, another Incubation Druid instead. So maybe just ramping their way towards an Emergent Ultimatum. So I can play Elite as its mana neutral with the Circle of Dreams Druids. Actually generates 1 mana thanks to War Master. And then I could just activate War Master right now. Or we can uh, play Growing Rights, which is more exciting, honestly. So let's see. Yeah, I guess we'll play Visionary and then tap Circle of Dreams. Castle Garen Brick, okay. And then we can still activate War Master with a floating mana. Pick up an Elite, but I think we're just activating here. And then I'll be able to activate the War Master's ability in the opponent's turn as well, in case that's somehow relevant. Opponent falls to four. So a Sweeper could be bad. Not quite enough mana for Emergent Ultimatum. Elder Gergroth, that's very beatable. We get to untap, play Elite, and then activate War Master a whole bunch of times. Can use Castle Garenbrig, tap Cradle, and let's see how many times we can activate here. Twice more, so yeah. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a fine hand. Land our elves into elite. We'll generate quite a few elves to set up our growing rights to transform, just missing a good mana sink, like maybe an elvish war master. Really hoping our land our elves doesn't die, otherwise the elite also looks a lot worse. Our opponent also with turn one land our elves. Now we could also play a circle of dreams druid instead which might be the preferred play, and then next turn we can maybe play Elite and then still play Growing Rights afterwards and have it transform. Opponents looks like Mono Green Stompy with the Scavenging Ooze. Okay, so play Elite. Then our Circle of Dreams will tap for 4 mana, and I guess we can even play Visionary first. And this will make five. Two mana left over, and an Elvish Warmaster seems perfect here, assuming it survives. Growing Rides transforms. We've got six elves, so not quite enough to activate Warmaster. But next turn we certainly will. Vivian can potentially fight our Warmaster here. Opponent killing the Circle of Dreams instead of War Master. Probably not what I would have picked, but I'll take it. 
So, let's see here. Can play another Circle of Dreams. Play a Clan Caller. And then we'll have plenty of Elves to activate Warmaster. And we just go face. I guess I can send two smaller Elves at Vivian. Send these face. And see how they block. Opponent takes it. Now I could also activate this in the opponent's turn to potentially grow one of our creatures so it doesn't die to a fight effect. Which may be the play instead. Only miss out on 4 damage. And then next turn we can maybe activate this twice or search up another clan caller. Have a lot of great options. It's gonna be another Vivian. But this time they won't be able to fight anything profitably. Still going for the Circle of Dreams. Activate Warmaster in response. We're gonna tear you apart. And our opponent's gonna need another fight effect here for single green. Alright, Primal Might, fair enough. That's just a trade. But we still have our Growing Rights transformed to activate Warmaster, which should seal the deal. Playing this first makes sense as it will generate two elves for one mana. So, activate this, can search up another clan caller, but not gonna be necessary here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Yorion, so probably a control deck, which does not bode well. But uh, definitely gonna keep Mystic into Marwyn, hopefully. Gonna be a March Exiling Mystic, most likely. Yep. Alright, so Warmaster into Marwyn it is. Still a reasonable curve, and then double company is not bad to have in this matchup. Should probably attack first. Absorb counters Marwen. Okay. We're just gonna hit for two, play company. Could play around Wandering Emperor by not attacking, but I think we need the pressure here. Shark Typhoon for two, we can try and hit a clan caller with company. Alright, they've got the Emperor. I am the Emperor of Kamigawa, and I will protect my people. Exiles Warmaster, not before we make a token. And Warmaster plus either Circle of Dreams or Realm Walker. Hmm, close call. I guess Realm Walker for card advantage might be better. Could also go Circle of Dreams plus Realm Walker and ignore Warmaster for now. Although a Circle of Dreams doesn't make a ton of mana without the tokens. Let's try this. Could see a Supreme Verdict, of course. And then we gotta follow up with another Collected Company. Put a stop in upkeep in case they Verdict and I want a Company hitting Realmwalker to get our mana's worth. Alright, we get to draw. No elves on top, so probably just gonna play Sentinel, keep up company. This way we trigger Warmaster twice. And then we can send two tokens at Emperor to make sure it dies. And these can go face.
Our swords will cross again. Memory Deluge goes digging. Probably time for a sweeper. Portable hole instead. Okay. I guess we'll company then to trigger Warmaster. This could be kind of bait to set up a verdict anyway, but I don't expect him to play Portable Hole in that case. So we would love to activate Warmaster to just kill the opponents, but I think we're going to be one mana short. Nars, that's fine. Although could find a sweeper here. Yeah, finds a disruption, that's fine. So we don't really have a reason to believe they have a sweeper in hand. If only I could play castle, we could kill them. Let's see, 5, 11, 12. So yeah, we don't quite have enough for lethal. Might be fine to play the elves just to trigger Warmaster. And then we'll kill Narsets. Don't have to all the way kill her, I suppose. Just dealing two is fine. And then we can send the rest at their face. Hang on to a Realm Walker as a leftover. Shark Typhoon cycled for zero, digging for that Supreme Verdict. Can they find it? They cannot, and our opponent explodes. Awesome. All right, so we actually managed to beat several blue-white control decks, which I kind of assumed to be a bad matchup, but the resilience of Collected Company and Realm Walker giving us that staying power definitely carried us to victory here. So yeah, quite happy with how our Mono Green Elves performed. Now, would I recommend Mono Green Elves for the competitive ladder? That I'm kind of hesitant to do here, as it is still a deck with quite a few weaknesses if you don't have the right starting hand, or if the opponent has some well-timed removal spells or hand disruption to take some of your payoff cards, you can get stranded with some unimpressive elves that the opponent can handle pretty easily. So not a perfect deck, but a ton of fun, and the wild cards won't necessarily go to waste, since you can also play elves in other formats like Historic. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.